Hi guys and welcome back to Airgun Evolution. I'm actually at my college workshop right here and I'll be showing you guys how to make this. This is my scope cam mount and I custom make this and total it cost about $12 and it works perfect. So what you're gonna need for this, a one inch scope riser off eBay and this cost about $6.50. You're gonna need some various hardware. This is all 1024 hardware and I get this from Home Depot. You're gonna need two pan head bolts along with some washers and nuts to go with them. The other thing you're gonna need to make this is an L bracket. Now I get this from Home Depot, it cost about $1.58 a piece and it's in the door section. Hi guys, now I have access to a drill press, a bench sander, and an angle grinder. So if you don't have access to those types of tools, you can make it with regular hand tools. A common hacksaw, just a regular file, and a hand drill is all you need. And if you don't have access to those, just go to your neighbor's garage when he's at work. I'm sure he wouldn't mind you borrowing his tools when he's not using them. First step we're gonna do is drill a hole straight down through the second and the fourth slot in the Picatinny rail. All the way through, try and get as centered as you can. You don't need it perfectly centered, but you know, you can just try a bit. I have my two holes drilled all the way through. Like I said, they don't have to be perfectly centered in the middle. That really doesn't affect it. The next step you're gonna wanna do is countersink these holes on the back side. Enough so that when you go to put your pan head screw in, it's sitting flush right down in there. I picked this countersink up at Harbor Freight for about $2. The important thing is, is that they're flush. It doesn't matter if one's deeper than the other, it doesn't matter at all. Now comes the fun part, cutting the Picatinny rail piece off the top, separating this little top bit from the actual bottom bit. You can use a hacksaw. I have an angle grinder, it sips through it like butter, so that's what I'm gonna use. So the key to this step is you're gonna wanna just try and take just the top part off and leave the bottom part as flat as you can. And I have done this before using C-clamps, but if you have a bench vise, that's gonna be the definite thing you wanna do. And if you have the patience, take your time because there is two springs that are glued in here. By grinding it off all at once, it'll create so much heat, it'll actually melt and burn that glue and those springs will come out. The springs aren't a, a vital part of it, you can, if they come out, that's fine, you can still use it. It's not a deal breaker, but to have them in there is a little nicer for that quick uh, detach mount. Safety glasses. I just remembered the trick. Unscrew this part. Comes off. This whole part drops down. There's the springs. This one, they don't seem to be glued in. You just take the springs right out, then cut it. Now this guy is gonna be extremely hot. Use something else to pick it up and flip it. Good enough. Let's 
So I've got the top rail cut off and it's on the floor right there. Okay, let me, let me get that. And remember, don't grab these with your hands. They're incredibly hot after grinding them off. This is what I just made right here. And you can see it's not perfectly flat and it's not going to be. I have a high side in the middle, a low side on the end and a gouge right there. That's perfectly fine. Who cares? If you're doing this project at home and you have a file, you can go through and file and just try and smooth this out as much as you can. I actually have a table sander right here. So I'm just gonna stick it on that, sand it smooth. That's what my surface looks like right now. You can see I've got a little gouge in there. That's not gonna affect it one bit. After I ground it down flat though, there was a little slag in my holes. What I did, I'd take my pan head bolt, run it in and out of them a few times, cleans it right up. Now that you got this right here, next step you gotta move over to your L bracket. Line this hole with that hole. On the back side, you can make a little mark and right there in the hole, in the bottom hole. You can see what I've done right there. I've lined all those holes up together. I'm gonna to cut this extra piece off and I'm gonna drill a hole right there. And once again, it doesn't have to be dead center. It helps a lot if it's dead center, but mine's not dead center and I'm going with it anyways. It'll work in the end. Cut this off, bevel the sharp corners out a bit and smooth out the hole on the back. You know, there's better tools to do all this stuff with, but if you only have an angle grinder, you can do it all with the angle grinder. Nice smooth, so if your hand hits it, doesn't gouge into you, bam, done. Now in this next step, you're gonna take your camera and make it so when you have your lens out, it lines up in the center of this arm right here. And then you make a mark on the side so you know how much to cut off. Then you wanna take a thin little strip of paper like this, and you wanna roll it really tight. And you'll see why in one second here, okay? Flip your camera over and stick it into the tripod mounting hole. You can actually use a lot less of this paper right here. That's good right there. Then take your marker and get a lot of wet ink right here on this piece of paper. everything lined up how it should be. Set the camera down and just press it and hold it there, wiggle it back and forth. Right there you'll see where the mark is made. That is where you're gonna need to drill your hole for your camera mounting bolt. Now you have your mark where you need to cut this off and your mark where you need to make your hole for your camera mounting bolt. What I like to do here is I like to actually make this a, like a elongated oval so you have some play to move your camera back and forth to help line everything up when you're mounting it on the gun and looking through the scope. And I'm choosing a drill bit that's just a bit bigger than this hole. Like I said, it doesn't have to be the tightest ever because you want a little bit of wiggle room so you can help position your camera better. I think I'm gonna go one bigger. And this is a 930 seconds drill bit I'm using right here. Like I said, you just want this a little bit bigger so you can expand and move everything around. My art teacher just walked by. He's an awesome guy. I graduated here a few years ago. He still lets me come in and do whatever I want.
and I'm drilling, ah, whoa, super close there, and I'm drilling a hole immediately next to it. Like I said, I want to make it uh, like an oval instead of just one hole. And this is why I always buy lifetime guaranteed tools because I know I'm gonna break them. I already broke one drill bit making this thing. You can see the size of the hole I made and that's just perfect. You can see some of the other ones I've made right here and right here. So that is exactly about perfect. So if I were at my house right now, I would have a Dremel tool and some metal files and I would make this hole that I just put in smooth nice and centered but that's the beauty of this you don't need it smooth you don't need it nice you don't need it centered good enough is good enough and it will work perfect so i'm just going to take my angle grinder and smooth this hole out right here and what i did off camera i thought i was recording but i wasn't recording i cut and rounded that edge off right there so that is perfectly smooth and we're pretty much done at this point for your camera mounting bolt, I go to Ace and I get a quarter by 20 nylon bolt and I like to get it the big flat head. And these cost 40 cents a piece. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna screw this all the way down in. Once it's in tight, hold your fingers right down to the base and unscrew your camera. Once it's off, count how many threads are showing. So I've got one, two, three, four, five threads. Five threads up from the bottom is where I'm gonna wanna cut. So I've got my nylon bolts and these are actually what hold the camera to the mount. I choose nylon nylon because it's going to be more forgiving on the camera you know I'd rather have the bolt threads give out than the camera threads rip out from the bottom of the camera I'm marking them five up and that's where I'm gonna cut them now I've done all kinds of things before I've actually just taken a knife and just pressed it into these and they cut off fine I've used the uh, table sander the the belt top the what do you call this thing? I've used the tabletop disc sander and I just push them and it grinds them down. That's the method I found out works the best and the quickest, so that's what I'm gonna do. But my recommendation is you get a minimum of four of these, make four of these, because they are so easy to lose and they're the one key piece that if you don't have, you're out of business. Time to chop these down to size. And like I said before, I used the razor knife before and just pressed down on them and they cut really easy. Last time I was here, I tried this and it worked so perfect. You just need to clean out the threads from the melted plastic. It takes about a second and a half. Just that one's done. And this one barely needs anything. You just your pair of camera mounting bolts. Easy. I know, right? So time to reassemble this thing. We've got lots of pieces around, but it's kind of self-explanatory. First, I'm gonna reassemble this into its full form. Take your two springs, jam them in there. Different models on eBay will have different types of springs. Then this kind I actually have here has some nice thick springs. So I'm putting this clamp bar back on. One of the little angle pieces is gonna be a little longer, one's gonna be a little shorter. The longer one is what clips onto your rail, so that's the one that you want facing how you're gonna clip it onto your rail, I guess. Line everything up. Put your bar in, get your bolt. And when this is clipped on your gun, you can actually adjust the tension, the, the force it bites onto the rail with this little bolt right here. Normally you only have to give it like a half a turn and it really changes how much grab it has. Grab your pan head bolts, slide them right into where you made your countersink holes. And then you want to get your washers and nuts. And this is where the magic starts to happen because the washers and nuts you add between here and the L bracket are how high it's going to position your camera looking through your scope. So now you're adjusting the height of your camera to line it up perfectly looking through your scope. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw some nuts on here so I don't have to keep wrestling with these bolts in the back to come out. Okay, so this is what you should have right now. Maybe you don't have the nuts there, maybe you do. Say you need some more height, you simply start adding some washers on. 
maybe your camera something's a little off kilter and your camera's looking down so you need to raise the front of it you just put more washers on one side than the other that gives you your can of your camera so take your l bracket your camera bar now put it right on here secure that all down with another nut now after you generally have your height set i go through and i cut these off with the angle grinder and i've had this so when i have my camera mounted here the lens will open up and look this way and i've also had it so it looks the other way you can also take this off and flip it around line it up so it looks the opposite way or it looks that way you can flip it around flip it around all these different configurations you can have your quick disconnect on the right or on the left you can have your camera looking over the top or the other direction but generally this is how I have the camera mounted I have it so the quick disconnect is on this side it's on the left side of the gun I have the camera looking over the top of the mount the main body off to the right but that is my scope cam mount in a nutshell Here's a completely finished one right here, all painted black. And using nuts and washers, the nuts just give you about two washers plus a half a washer. So it's just a little bit different adjustment if you need it. Here are some different versions of the mount. So it clips on the under rail and the camera sits off to the side of the gun, just viewing straight ahead, not looking through a scope. This is a dovetail one I've made. This one I needed to get the camera a little lower to the rail, but that's it in a nutshell. You can use any type dovetail, Picatinny rail. That's how I make them. They stay solid, they don't move around at all. And if you stick around, I'll show you actually how to put it on a gun, put the camera on there and get everything lined up perfect. All right guys, hope this wasn't too boring. Hope you learned something. If you did, leave a like and a comment below. Definitely check out part two where I actually show you how to put it on the gun, correctly adjust it, line it up. Hope you enjoy guys. I'll See you later.